is CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Off the top, a two-year-old killed allegedly by her own father in Pembroke Pines. CBS News Miami's Peter Dinch has the report. Pembroke Pines police tell us that the suspect in this case is Geronimo Duran, the toddler's father. They say that Duran's grandmother came home after the attack and called police. Police say they found a weapon at the scene, a knife that they believe was used. Duran right now is charged with first degree murder. Police say the 33 year old Duran had been separated from the mother and had picked up the little girl earlier in the morning. A motive is not clear at this point. We are hearing from Pembroke Pines police about this case. We'll have much more on the story in an hour. In Pembroke Pines, Peter Dench, CBS News, Miami. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, a beautiful shot, but clouds are trying to gather and storms are likely later today. Next weather, meteorologist Cindy Pressler lets us know why. Being fed by a lot of moisture at the surface, an unbelievable record high was tied today. 94 degrees in Miami, so all that combined, and with the sea breezes coming inland now, we are likely to see those storms. So. Pattern change starting tomorrow. After today's storms tomorrow, most of those storms will be pushed over the interior and the west coast because our winds are going to turn to the east. And then this weekend, wow, temperatures will be uh, in the 80s for daytime highs with drier air coming in. And I'll show you why that's going to be changing that drastically in just a bit. Right now it is 89 degrees, so the air is mixing a little bit down here in the surface. So that's what brought the temperature down just slightly. Look at Homestead, 83 degrees. Really, Homestead is starting to get a little bit of development there, but when you add the humidity to it. It feels like it's in the triple digits in Miami, close to it in Fort Lauderdale, Homestead, because that's where we're starting to get a little bit of development here with some thunderstorms just beginning to pop up. Sea breeze, you can see it right there, just passed through Kendall. That is making its way inland now, so those storms should start developing along the sea breeze and then drift toward the east coast. I think by five, six, seven o'clock this evening, we will have showers and thunderstorms. Some could contain gusty winds, very heavy downpours. There's a flooding um, it, uh, component to this because these storms will be drifting toward the east and kind of getting pushed up along the coast. So according to our rain tracker here, six o'clock, we were looking at some rain from Fort Lauderdale down to Miami. This just gives you an idea that we are expecting storms. By nine o'clock, that cluster moving off, still have a few out in Monroe County, but it looks like this is going to be an evening event. Heavy downpours, possibly some flooding, and then Thursday afternoon, I think more likely off to the interior than trying to push them west or westward. So we'll have to to see how that works out, but there's enough moisture in place that the showers and thunderstorm threat is going to stay with us at least until the weekend. So how much rain through Saturday? Half an inch to an inch of rain. Wonderful. We'll take that. We need it. It's dry out there. Frontal system. Well, the first one kind of washes out and then the second one. This is the one that's going to come through this weekend as we turn our winds to the east ahead of the front. Here comes the front as we head into the weekend. Drier air. This is called a backdoor front, by the way, because it comes in from the northeast just like the back door. That high pressure is going to push it through, bring in drier air and a little bit cooler temperatures too. So temperatures topping out in the 80s this weekend. Gotta love that. This weekend is going to be a treat and we're going to stay in the 80s into next week with a little better chance for some showers and storms starting on Monday. Now at four, a 14 year old accused of killing her own grandmother just appeared in a Broward courtroom. A judge ordered her to be held on a 21 day detention. Another hearing is scheduled for June 12th. According to investigators, the teen killed her grandmother. They say it happened inside a Lauderdale Lakes apartment near State Road 7 and Commercial Boulevard. The Broward Sheriff's Office says the teen's father left her with her grandmother. When he came back, he found his mother unresponsive responsive on the floor. The 14 year old was arrested and charged with second degree murder. At this time, we are not releasing her name or picture due to her age. A man was arrested, accused of a disturbing crime in Medley. Police say 70 year old Jose Dennis exposed himself to a 15 year old boy on the Metro rail. It happened at the Palmetto Metro rail station. This is along Northwest 77th Street and 79th Avenue. Dennis was taken into custody for questioning and later arrested. No word yet if there are any other victims out there. 
An investigation is underway after a fire in northwest Miami Dade. Chopper 4 over the scene earlier today. Crews were battling the fire affecting three mobile homes. This is off Northwest 79th Street and 13th Avenue. Fortunately, no one was hurt. No word yet on what sparked that fire. State Board of Education is in a meeting in Miami today, and some Miami Day teachers are voicing their concerns. CBS News Miami's Morgan Reiner has the story. This is the first state school board meeting since Florida ranked one of the worst in the nation for teacher pay, and educators said it cannot last. Florida Education Commissioner Manny Diaz Jr. said Florida is doing it right. I'm proud to, uh, and thrilled to announce that again, uh, for a second year in a row, we have been ranked number one in the nation for education by U.S. News and World Report. This recognition highlights our state's exceptional performance in both higher education and K-12 education. But music teacher and Florida Education Association President Andrew Sparner said it comes at a price or lack thereof. We're going in the wrong direction. Bad policy has kept teacher pay low. According to the National Education Association, Florida is one of the worst states in the country for average teacher salaries, falling at 50th for pay. The average starting salary for teachers in 2024 was $44,530, and the average overall teacher salary was 69544 But pay was only one issue they said the state is turning its back on. The closings of schools, the banning of books, the limitation on curriculum, and the list goes on and on. When it comes to the closing of schools, Commissioner Manny Diaz said one of the reasons is because the state is giving parents a choice. Many families who have multiple kids sometimes have each individual kid at a different school in a different setting, sometimes in district schools, sometimes in private schools, sometimes in charters, because we're trying to meet the individual needs of each student that needs to thrive. We are developing human beings. We are not creating widgets. And so that landscape is important. And so you've seen these reports of some districts having to close schools. Well, that's how this works. Morgan Reiner, CBS News, Miami. Federal investigators are allegedly set to take the next step in the case against Sean Diddy Combs. The charges he may soon face when we come back. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. We are on a verdict watch. The Trump hush money trial is now in the hands of a jury. Jury deliberations are underway and former President Donald Trump's historic criminal trial in New York. CBS News Miami's Michael George reports from outside of the courthouse. Former President Donald Trump struck a pessimistic tone after jury deliberations in his criminal case got underway. Mother Teresa could not beat those charges, but we'll see. We'll see how we do. The presumptive Republican presidential nominee is facing 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Prosecutors contend he tried to conceal a repayment to his former fixer Michael Cohen for $130,000 in hush money paid to adult film star Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 presidential election. That is the question at the heart of this. Were the business records falsified in order to try and unlawfully influence the election? Trump has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. These charges are rigged. The whole thing is rigged. Judge Juan Mershon began the day by issuing instructions to the jurors, saying the burden of proof never shifts from the people to the defendant. If the people fail to satisfy their burden of proof, you must find the defendant not guilty. And if the people satisfy their burden of proof, you must find the defendant guilty. The former president's fate comes down to a jury of seven men and five women. They have the testimony of 22 witnesses over several weeks to consider. I think we're looking at hours versus days. The faster it is, the better it is for the prosecution. This is one of four criminal cases Trump is facing, but most likely the only one that will wrap up before the presidential election in the fall. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Federal investigators may be moving forward with a case against Sean Diddy Combs. Sources tell CNN additional possible witnesses could testify. Eight accusers have filed civil lawsuits against him. They claim sexual assault. One of those eight lawsuits was filed by ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. That case was settled. Ventura was seen being assaulted by Combs on hotel security cameras. 
An experimental electrical therapy is giving some function back to people left paralyzed after a spinal cord injury. CBS News Miami Skylar Henry shows us how it works. Sharon Campbell was paralyzed from the shoulders down in 2014 after wrestling with a friend. You can't feed yourself, you can't make it to the bathroom, you can't dress yourself, so it's very severe injury. Uh, life changing is not putting it lightly whatsoever. He's a quadriplegic and was among 60 people to take part in a clinical trial led by the University of Washington, testing a non-invasive electrical device. Unlike other devices, this one is placed outside the body rather than implanted and sends a strong electrical current to the spinal cord. We've seen remarkable recovery when the stimulation is applied to the back of the neck after spinal cord injury. We've seen some individuals that could barely move their hands, or grasp or lift an object immediately be able to grasp first light objects, then heavier objects. Patients had weeks of intensive rehabilitation to prepare for the electrical stimulation treatment, which takes place over 12 weeks. Scientists say the device only works for patients who have maintained some neural activity. They develop this strength and dexterity over a period of months as they practice with the stimulator, and then this appears to persist for many months afterwards. Campbell says he's experiencing increased movement. Changes with my dexterity, changes in grip strength. Uh, one of my big goals was just being able to reach across my body and help wash. So they sound like simple things, but they're very functional and very important. My daughter's birthday, tying a bunch of like balloons and stuff, being able to do that, being able to give her the birthday party she wanted. He's grateful for any improvement in his quality of life. Skyler Henry, CBS News. Now to the hunt for the Stanley Cup. It resumes in New York. That's after another overtime thriller for the Florida Panthers. The Panthers dominated the game for the third game in a row. It went into overtime, but Cats win three to two. The series now tied game five is set for Thursday night at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Coming up tonight on CBS News Miami at 5, it is National Stroke Awareness Month. One local nurse knows all about the signs and symptoms, but she didn't expect to become a patient herself. How her colleagues jumped in to save her life, all new at 5. That's the CBS News Miami Quickcast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami, and have a great day.